lesson for you guys. Um, we get to talk a little bit about what got him into drumming. Um, he's a natural player, so it doesn't mean that it's not good to be able to read, but he does everything with his ear. Um, so yeah, it's a very important thing, and that's what Tim's going to be chatting to us about today. I just didn't find myself thinking about it, you know what I mean? Like when I would sit down to play, I wasn't sitting there in my head trying to put something together and then put that to drums. Yeah. I would just sit down and start playing. And I'm a firm believer of what comes out of you, what flows out of your body naturally with anything in life, yeah. whether it be you're a, a writer or an artist or, or a musician, guitar player, drummer, whatever that may be people who are the most successful at it are the ones that don't think about it, they just do it. They just flow. They sit down and whatever is coming out of them is what they want to be happening. They're not sitting there second guessing themselves, they're not trying to like put it together in their head, picturing what it should sound like. They just sit down and do what feels right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there obviously are hundreds of thousands of phenomenal musicians and artists and poets and writers and you know all aspects of life there are people who are absolutely masters of their craft yeah. um, and I'm sure they have the not the, maybe classical is not the right word but they have the schooling and the, the, yeah. the training behind it but you see them and for me like I'll just I'll keep it with drummers like when I watch a drummer that I idolize in a way they don't play like anybody else I've ever seen. Yeah. And I'm not sitting there watching, like, you remember back in the day, obviously, Travis Barker came out. Yeah. Like, when he did Everyone went nuts. He was the first person that I was ever like, whoa, what yeah. the hell? Like, yeah. this That's dude the coolest is ridiculous. Thing I know. Yeah. And then, for years, everybody that I knew that started playing drums or that Matt was a drummer, yeah. just played exactly like Travis Barker. Exactly. They didn't do what they wanted to do. And as everyone's got that problem. They just yeah. mimicked. Yeah. Travis Barker. Yeah. And he plays kind of weird. Yeah. He like playing that really high yeah, yeah. high hat, but his tongs really low, like yeah. super high cymbals. Like he doesn't play like anybody else either. Yeah. Which is why he was so unique. Like, at the exactly. Time. Yeah. Like you could look at him and be like, oh yeah, that's Travis Barker's drum yeah. setup because nobody yeah. else set up like he exactly. did. Exactly. And he was like the first guy to eliminate you have your four toms. Yep. Everyone now uh, takes off second tom, yep. replaces with the right cymbal. Oh yeah. Travis Barker kind of started that trend, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And forever there, for years and years, everybody I'd met, you know, we'd be talking drums and I'd finally see them again and they'd have their kit set up and it would just be legitimately Travis Barker, Travis Barker yeah. to a team. Even cymbals, Zildjian cymbals, everyone just got that 100% yep. because of and Travis Barker. And they'd sit there and they'd be playing yeah. just exactly like Travis Barker plays. Yeah. And you know, like, you have to, you have to draw inspiration from somewhere. Yeah. Whether it be family or friends or another musician or, or... I don't know, the blue sky. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like everybody draws their inspiration from somewhere. And like personally, I've always drawn it from my family, my father, my mother, and the music that I grew up listening to, which was a lot of older stuff like Zeppelin and you know, John Bonham and you know, Dave Roll and just absolute beaters of drums. Just yeah. animals, you know what I mean? And, so you're trying to say you weren't trying to mimic them, you're trying to just find inspiration from That's each person. Exactly. Rather yeah. than be like, all right, well, I'm going to do that. Take that and then put your own spin on it. And I mean, to this day, I've been playing drums for 19 years. I still am constantly setting things up differently. Yeah. Like I'll sit down one day, the kit will be set up exactly like it was the day before. And I'll be like, you know what? This just feels weird today. Yeah. And I'll raise some things and I'll lower some things. Yeah. Like, it's never, things are never set in stone. With you also like, find like you, you tighten your skins differently to feel different yep. balances. Yep. And you change your pedals and tighten everything and see if exactly. it feels better. Maybe it is. Nothing never ever feels like it's like, okay, cool, this is never yeah. going to change. And have you, have you had days where you feel, I think this is what you're going with, um, like even your sticks just feel weird. You're yep. like, I need to have new sticks. I can't do these sticks anymore. Oh, yeah. This but, is the, I play these now, they're Vic Firth 1As. Uh, they're like a 5A, but yeah. with a little more length, a different tip on them. Um, I like them, like I was telling you the other day, like, I like to choke up a decent amount. That's probably about as much as I... So choke up will mean going higher up yeah. into the stick. so like obviously, I like to have a little bit of extra down there. It helps with my 
just the weight difference yep. and you know but I'm, you're I'm a big a lot player yeah so like it helps me with my like my wrist sometimes too yeah um but i also play very spread out too like i play i sit very far back like obviously this isn't my setup this isn't how i play drums at all but like let's say this was my kid you know i sit yeah you sit far I back sit pretty far back because one of the first things i learned from the dude who did give me lessons growing up was that you don't want your elbows to be behind you okay. when you're playing so i have it where the tip of my stick is hitting the center of my snare drum and my arms like this so you even, don't want your arms behind even with the side of my body i play like, like a, this like a 90 degree yes yeah. because yeah. it's like when you're back here or you say you know you're like on top of your drums at all tense up you're losing yes you're losing yeah. that momentum you're you're, you're yeah. tense you're not just like loose and relaxed and like okay cool let's do this good, yeah um, I like that. Good tip. That's it's honestly one of the best pieces of advice I'd ever got that I still work with today. And do you ever do like playthroughs? Uh, do you just put on CDs and just jam along and still actually just work day. out yep. weirdest stuff? Because I mean, our last night is known for doing covers. Yep. Um, and you don't necessarily just play the same bass drum pattern and nope. obviously he's passing it up. So. You're throw missing my own spin around. On it. Yeah, throw your own spin on it. I still very much so like I'll I like to play for about an hour a day if I can squeeze it in. Um, whether that be just pad stuff or behind the kit or even even a day of not playing, but at least you know maybe cleaning the drums, cleaning my cymbals, making sure everything's nice and fresh, changing heads. Just I like to be around and in the presence of my drums. For at least an hour every day. Oh, you guys just listen to that, kids? Because that's an important tip. That's just, I don't know. Playing drums is the best thing that ever happened to me, personally, yeah. mentally, emotionally. Like, it's music in general is why I am who I am. Like, if I was to all of a sudden lose my hearing tomorrow, I would probably give up on life. Like, I would be, I would see no more point anymore yeah. because, like, for me, music has helped me through every aspect of life and being able to play drums. And, and play music has made it that much more special, obviously. Um, but yeah, I just, it's always been, for me, it's always been just what comes naturally. Obviously there is, you have to think about it. I'm not saying just sit down and go to town, but like, at the end of the day, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. Try it sometime. Sit Making down. Making mistakes is part of the process. That's how you learn. The more mistakes you make, the better you will eventually be. Yes. Because you won't continue to make those mistakes. And at the end of the day, at least four or five times a set, I'm hitting a rim, I'm missing a cymbal, like, it's not, but it's because I'm not sitting down. Like, when I sit down, what comes out of me is just natural. Yeah. That's just how I play. I can't help but play hard and be very into it. Like, I can't just sit down and be like, play our songs. Like, Hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't have that in me. It's not, I don't have that control. Yeah. Because music in my life, playing drums, is probably the one thing in my life that has the capability of taking control of me. Yeah. And it's the one time where I'm not thinking about anything else in my life and I'm not worried about anything. That 30 minutes, that hour, whatever it may be, you know, it's the one time where everything else goes out the window and I just shut my brain off. And the muscles kick in, and my body's just like, yep. Kind of living for the moment, basically. Huh? Living for that moment. Exactly. 